Today for friends we have a new project on the bench, Breedlove um, Atlas Series Retro OM slash SME guitar, it's an electro acoustic, a couple of things here and there, this is the Korean line of Breedlove, now Breedlove guitar started in 1990 by two guys, Breedlove and Henderson, who both worked for Taylor, they left Taylor, started the Breedlove company and started hand making guitars in America. This is a later Korean model. Now, in that time, uh, Breedlove himself went back to Taylor in about 1994. Henderson left to become a furniture maker and the company was taken over by Kim Breedlove, who was still there. Um, they decided to do a non-American line, a Korean line, which are these guitars, which are the Breedlove, Breedlove Atlas series. So made in Korea any time after 1994, I imagine. Um, Nice looking guitar, but it does need work. And um, I have been across the frets with a fret rocker, and there are no fewer than 10 frets need attention. So we are going to give this a complete fret level, which came as a surprise to its owner. Um, I also told him how much it was going to cost, and that came as more of a surprise. So I explained to him look, what it entails, how long it takes, and why it costs so much. Um, to which he says, look, just get, go ahead and do the work. Um, as you can see the strings need changing, they're not fantastic, they are dirty, so we are going to remove the strings, remove the nut, uh, we're going to get the neck dead straight, I'm going to go across the uh, frets with a fret rocker and show why we need to do a fret level. Uh, there are at least 10 frets rocking, there may be more once I've got the neck dead straight and the strings off, that was just a quick shimmy across with the fret rocker, so it's having a, neck le uh, a fret level. Uh, which means we're going to have to recrown and polish the frets as well. All in all, it's with a setup, it's about a three and a half, four hour job. I'm thinking £115, not expensive for three and a half, four hours of my expertise. Uh, in fact, I'm not even charging that much. I told him I'd charge him 95 quid for the whole lot. And that's a complete fret level, recrown and polish, and a setup. So, all in all, I think that's a fantastic price. Um, but it's work I'm going to be doing anyway. So, Get the strings off, get the neck straight, and I'll bring you back in, I'll bring the camera in, we'll put it at a different angle, we'll go across with fret rocker, and I'll show you why this guitar needs a fret level. So, we're going to set the neck dead straight. Now at the moment, there's back bow in the neck, means it's bending that way, like a rainbow. Because I've taken the strings off, so you're taking off that tension, and the uh, neck bends at the back. Now when you put the strings back on and tension them up to tune to, to pitch, you put about 60 kilograms of pull back on the headstock and it straightens the neck out. So that's why we have a truss rod. Truss rod is a metal rod running down the centre of the neck. And we normally have two way affair. And you can tighten them and loosen them to make the neck bend one way or another. I'm just going to grab a, uh, an allen key so we can alter the truss rod. Make sure we get the right one. Should be 4mm, that is 4mm. I'm just going to loosen it, loosen the um, truss rod right off. There you go, nice loose. You see there, that's just freely moving about. And what we're going to do is we're going to set this neck dead level because once we've got the neck level, we can check the frets. Okay, so, so that still has a little bit of backbone, which means I'm going to tighten it the opposite the wrong way around. So I'm going to turn this anti clockwise. It should be a two-way truss rod. Turn it anti-clockwise, it'll bend that neck the way I want it to bend. There you go. These frets, by the way, are in quite a, they're quite tarnished, a little bit grubby. Don't think they've ever been polished by the looks of it. The guitar's certainly been stood for a long time because it's covered in dust. I've already had it, I've had it plugged in as well, and the electric's a little bit crackly. So let's just try you there. So what we're doing now is we're getting the neck dead straight. And that's pretty much there. Still a tiny, tiny bit of back bow. I'm just going to give it another turn on the truss rod. Probably 16th of a turn. So just give it a little nip back there like so. And that looks dead straight to me now. 
tiny tiny bit of relief in there so we need to get rid of that so we're going to turn it back that sixteenth these frets may not be seated correctly they're certainly not following the radius of a fingerboard old guitar probably 1990s okay that's as close to straight as we can get it just about so what we're going to do is I'm going to take a fret rocker if you've not seen one of these before I'll explain it it has it four sides four different lengths longest next longest longest next longest shortest the reason why that is we can check three frets at a time the reason we do three is if we get a rock like we do there we know the one in the middle is high so we just do four, three frets at a time, three, three, turning the fret rocker as we progress along the neck. So we're going to go and we're going to check the whole lot. Now I've already checked these. Uh, I checked them with the strings on. I'm now going to check them with the strings off with the neck dead straight. You just see me set the neck straight. I always do these videos for the client. Remember these videos are for the client, not for YouTube. It's just happens that I post them on YouTube. People tend to like them. So okay, that neck settled a little bit it's not quite as straight as I want it still got a little bit of relief in there so let's settle for a few seconds like right, there you go a little bit of fall away down this end but that's I'm happy with that so that neck is straight so we're going to take the fret rocker we're going to do three frets at a time starting at this end I will check in three areas areas being one is closest to you two is the center and three is closest to me and I'll be marking everything with a marker pen so there's one if you hear a rock you know that fret is high first one in two areas, in areas two and one. Just in case you're in any doubt as to why I'm recommending a fret level, you've already got three high frets in the first five. So you've got four in the first six, frets are all over the place. That's five high frets. Six. Eight was so really high. Nine. Same fret, nine. Ten. Eleven. Wow. Eleven. Twelve. That's ludicrously high there. So, over. 20 frets we do have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 out of 20 are high. Uh, there's no other way to fix this than to skim across the whole lot. You have to understand 
I'll explain this on a lot of videos. If I alter this one fret, it will affect these two frets either side of it. So that one can affect five frets altogether. So if I remove material from this one, it can alter that one and that one, that one and that one, just by altering that one fret. So once we get to about four or five frets, we just do the whole lot. And that way we're going to get a consistent level across the whole length of the neck. That's a long-winded process. It takes a while. The leveling doesn't take that long at all. The recrowding doesn't take that long. It's the polishing. It takes a time. So it's a good three and a half hours in this. I'm going to explain exactly what I'm going to do. First we're going to remove the nut. I'm going to remove it very carefully because we don't want to chip the lacquer or the wood. Um, but I'm just going to show... Well, I'm going to go across the frets again with a fret rocker. First I'm just going to show the frets to the camera, if I can. And all these ones with black pen on them. Or, the, or the, they are the high spots. So let me point them out to you. That one, that one, that one, that one. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve frets. I'm hoping you can see the black marker on there. That's where the spots are high. Um, so I'm going to go across with the fret rocker again. You'll see some of them are marked in two areas. So we actually have two areas there, two there, two there. Um, two there, two there, two on five. So we have 17 high spots over 12 frets out of 20. So I'm going to go across with the fret rocker again. You are listening for the rock. So listen. That one's high. Next one along. And on this side, next one along, next one along, next one, I always do these videos for the client's peace of mind, especially if it's a new client, he doesn't know me, you've got to take me at my word, if I tell you something wants doing, it wants doing. If you're not happy with it, you are most welcome to come and collect your guitar and take it somewhere else. No skin off my nose, but I stand by my reputation and my reviews. There you go. I'm sorry about that. It's my wife coming downstairs. She didn't know I was filming. I'm going to leave a video running. Just listen. So there you go. So we have 12 high frets. We're going to skim across the whole lot, get them all done in one fell swoop. Um, and I'll explain what we do as I do it. I'm going to remove the knot. Once that's removed, we'll get everything set up and we'll come back and we'll get to levelling these frets. So, fret levelling. Get down to it. Now what we must do first is again check the neck, not straight edge. Make sure the neck is straight. Yep, fine with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a precision straight file, diamond grit, perfectly flat diamond grit with the handle. Got this from Chris Allsop on eBay. And what we're going to do is we're going to level each fret. Now what I'm going to do is write myself down a little key or a little map as to what frets need work. Um, just so I have a reference. So what this letter is there. Right, okay, that letter's okay. Got me a pen. Should have done this before, but it's okay. And as mentioned before, frets I number one, two, three. Far side one, middle two, near side three. So fret two there, look. Just in the middle, area two. Fret four, areas one and three. And this gives me a reference. Fret five, area one. Fret six, one and three. One and three. Eight, nine. Fret ten, area two. Eleven, area one. Sorry, three, three closest to me. Twelve, area one. 
14, area 1, there, 16, areas 1 and 3, 17, area 2, just in the middle, 18, 1 and 3, 19, just in the middle, or 2. So there you go, we have 12 frets, frets 2, 4, 5, 6, 10, 11, 12, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, and the areas 2, 1, 3, 1, 1, 3. So I know exactly which fret is high and in which area. Uh, very, very simple to follow. Fret number followed by area 1, 2, or 3. So now if a pen gets rubbed off, I do have a reference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a clean rag or clean cloth. I see on fret 2, area 2, that's where it's high. So we're just going to take the file, and I'm going to actually not just do one at a time, I'm going to do quite a lot in one go. But what I'm going to do is, as I file this, it will give me resistance because that fret's high. But once I stop getting resistance, I'll know that that fret is at the level of the two frets around it. And I can ease off a little. Not pre I'm pressing down lightly, not too hard. And we're just going to follow the radius. filings on there now. What we're going to do is we're going to take my fret rocker. When I find it, I didn't have it out. There it is. And we're just going to check these frets. And there you go, it's no longer high. So we're going to move along to the next one, these high spots here. And this is how we do it. Wipe the file. It may look like I'm going a little bit gung-ho at it, but trust me, I'm not. So I'm going to check fret 4, areas 1 and 3. Good, just check again. So already we've got these six frets all done. Just check fret six, two, three, four, six areas, one and three, that's good. Fret seven's good, eight's good, nine's good. We already checked these ten in area two. So we're moving up rapidly up here. Don't worry about all these yet. What we're going to do is we're going to level all these in one in a bit. Once I remove the excess at the top, so I'm going to follow my key. Ten and eleven and twelve all need doing all different areas. So I've got ten area two. Eleven three. Still high.
monster, a little bit higher there. Just in the middle. 16, 17. That's good. 18 areas. One and three. One's good. Three is now good. And 19 area two. So there you go. We have the press all level. So what we're going to do now is that's quite a coarse file. I'm now going to go with my number four cut Swiss file made by uh, Glad. Is it Gladon or oh, Valorb? It's a Valorb file. This is super sharp but super smooth it's number four cut really really smooth and i have one perfectly flat side i'm going to wipe off all the detritus from there all the filings and i'm just going to glide across this file along the whole length just to see what i think and that feels pretty good that's gliding across really nicely so i'm thinking we've got all these frets just about level they feel really good so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we maintain the radius now what I would normally do with these frets is I would take my leveling beam which is here it's a piece of 2b1 box section steel ground perfectly flat with some 240 grit on there and the way to get a perfectly nice level across the whole length is just give it a few strokes of this following the radius Most frets are now all level, so I'm going to give it a wipe again. What we're going to do is we're going to pen all of the frets and we're going to go across with a radius block, 14 inch radius. Now, this radius here matches the radius there, so if we get black pen on the top and we give a couple of swaths, if all the pen goes, we know we've got the frets level and we have matched the radius. All these tops are now flat and level with each other, or they should be. Leveling frets is not a difficult job, it doesn't take long. When you first start doing jobs like this, it can be quite daunting. You're thinking, oh, I'm taking too much off. No, you're not, really. Just feel the file. But so a lot of work to do on these frets. Leveling them is the easy part. Just recrowning them which takes the time and then polishing again. So we have black pen on all of the frets. So ready to It's got some old paper on there. This is perfect for what we want to do. And we're just going to stand up for this, just make it a little bit easier. And in one direction. I'm happy with that. And there you go. Just going to check the radius with a radius gauge, uh, which is out somewhere again. It's up the aisle up. Straight across the top of the fret. Good. Yeah, very happy with that. So the frets should now be level. All the tops are silver. We're going to go across with the fret rocker again, just to make sure we're all level. So 
far so good. There you go, that's fantastic. So all the frets are now level. So what I need to do next is, now we've leveled them, the tops of the frets are flat going this way. We need to rebuild that arc that we call the crown going that way. So it's like a D on its side, uh, like a dome. We need to recrown these. So we're gonna get the fingerboard all taped up. We're gonna tape everywhere bar the frets so we can work on the frets. The reason we tape them up is if we slip with a file, we don't wanna dig into the wood. We also don't wanna put scratches into the wood. So we're going to protect everything uh, as we've done with the body up here because again if we slip with a file we're not going to put a ding in the body so we're going to basically tape everything up we're going to come back and i'm going to show you how we crown these frets once they're crowned we can move on to the next part which i'll explain in a little bit more detail in just a little while so give me a few minutes to get set up we'll move the camera so you can see better and we'll get prepare this neck ready for crowning the frets so I briefly mentioned what crowning frets entails. So the frets, we've flattened them across this way, but we need to rebuild that crown. So where they're flat, we need to re rebuild that crown there. And that creates a contact point between the bottom of the string and the top of the fret. And we need it quite thin. So normally, ideally, around 0.4, 0.5 millimeters wide. Now, because we've flattened the tops, they're probably a couple of millimeters wide. So, well, maybe a millimeter and a half. So we need to take those flat spots and turn them into crowns. And I'm going to show you exactly how we do that. I'm just going to mark up five. And in the olden days we'd have used a free corner file, but we don't need to do that nowadays because you have something like this called a Z file from Stumac. £125 this cost me. It's gold, but the cuts are. It has a short cut on one side and a long cut on the other. You turn it 180 degrees, it's got the opposite. Long cut on this side, short on the other. And what this file does is this will build the crown for you and it will not touch the top of the fret. So I'm going to show you how it works. It's just a few strokes. That way, turn it 180 degrees. And you should see a thin black line across the top. What it's done is taken that flat fret. It's now created that crown. And then I'll take my normal crowning file and this will just remove any inconsistencies or any burrs it will just go across the top and that is one done and I'm going to do I'm going to do these five just to show you and then we're going to go across with fret record but because we're keeping that black line on the top we're not removing any height from the frets we already know they're all the right level they're level with each other so all we need to do is just rebuild this crown Wipe the file, I'm supposed to wipe the file after every fret, every two is okay. Some may need a little more work than others, as you'll see flat spots on them, so we may need a little, need a, may need a little bit more work, but there you go. Again. Profiling file. But you get a feel for how these are, so you kind of know when they're ready, and that's it. Really, really easy to do. We're going to take the fret rocker again, we're just going to check that we've maintained that consistent level across all of the frets. And we have, we know the frets are level because we've leveled them, you was there when I did it. So there you go, that's five frets done in real quick time. In the olden days using a three corner file this would take quite a bit longer because you wouldn't have the ingenuity or the ingeniousness of this kind of file here which is a brilliant thing. It cost me £125. It's amazing. It's worth its weight in I don't know what. I've used it on 30 jobs so far and it's still going strong so if I have to buy one of these a year it is not an expense or an extravagance. 
it is something you need anyway and it's well worth buying so anyway I'm going to mark the rest of these frets up get the rest of them done and tomorrow we'll crack on with the polishing now to explain about polishing what polishing does is it not only makes the frets shine it also removes the scratches and I'm going to explain about scratches in a minute and why we need to remove them it's why we polish the frets and we don't just polish them give them a polish and that's it it's much much deeper than that let me just get these parts up once I've got these marks up I can explain in more detail and I can show you what I mean okay so I've penned all of the frets so polishing the frets now when we leveled them we put scratches in that way now we've just recrowned them we put scratches in that way so you've got crisscross scratches here and we need to polish those out so what we do is we go with a coarse grit of sandpaper going to a finer grit. I normally use 7 grits of sandpaper started at 400 through to 2000. So your grits will be 400, 600, 800, 1000, 1200, 1500, 2000. Giving us 7 polishes going with a finer grit each time. What it will do is it will remove all of the scratches and bring the frets to a glass like finish. Once that's done, I'll finish them off with finest grade steel wool or extra fine, super fine steel wool. Once that's done, these frets will be scratchless and they, they will be super, super shiny and glass-like. Um, obviously, I'll, I'll explain more of that when we get onto that part of the process anyway. But for now, I've got the rest of these frets to do. I'm going to get them recrowned. Once they're recrowned, it's, it's 7.30 in the evening now. I've got to be at hospital at 8.30. I've got to go for an injection. So I'm probably just going to get these recrowned. And once that's done, I'll prepare them for polishing. And I think I'm going to come back and get the polishing done tomorrow. So I'll bid you... Good evening for now and um, come back tomorrow and we'll crack on and get this finished. I'm now coming back down the opposite way and I'll show you how I work the frets when they're above the body. I've already had the guitar turned 180 degrees and done this side and I've turned it back around to the original position and I'm just finishing off these edges on this far side here but notice uh, I don't want to be digging into the body that's why I turn the guitar around 180 degrees. Because I can't do it, I can't do this side with the file this way. I have to turn it around and go from that side. So we turn the guitar around. The same again this side. And you see I can work it without digging into the body there. But it's while we have the tape on anyway. I'm not digging into the body look. And I don't need to go from the centre to the end there. And that's reprofiling the frets at the far end. And then, like I say, this is removing any inconsistencies I might have and any burrs, and it's just rounding over the beveled edges as well. And once I get to this one here, the last one here, I can go the whole length, you see. So there you go. Now, I've already done the first five on the far side near the headstock, and I've done all of these at this end, so I've just got these middle ones to do now. And this is a lot easier now, you see, because I can just go straight across, like so. Here I'm doing the bevels as well, just slightly angling on the bevels. Four more to do. Last one. And that is it, that is all of the frets levelled and recrowned. We're now ready to move on to the polishing. Uh, that is what I'm going to do tomorrow. So for this evening we are finished. I've done as much as I'm going to do. And there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. Rear day off from Royal Mail today. And the, the only reason I've really had today off is um, I had a hospital appointment this morning for an ultrasound scan for a problem I've been having. Uh, but anyway, this video is not about that. So let's crack on to where we are. So polishing the frets. And what I normally do is I take six different grits of paper from 600 grits, 600, 800, 1000, 1200, 1500, 2000, six grits for polishing, like so. But what I like to do is, once I've recrowned the frets, you normally get, you have scratches across the top of it. I like to go with some 400 grit, just to remove the roughness of the scratches this way, where we've leveled the frets before. And this, 
basically takes these scratches more or less right out. And so I like to go with some 400 at first, just nice, nice and steady, not anything mental. And it takes all of those nasty scratches away. And then we can get onto the polishing with the finer grits. Now, polishing with finer grits each time, it's not only just going to, it's not going to just remove scratches, it's all going to bring these frets to a beautiful shine. You'll notice I'm wearing a glove, and that's because there's always a problem with grip, by the way. I'm saying something, but it still slips out using gloves, but it makes it a lot easier and it stops you getting all the muck and detritus and whatever in your skin. I do believe this sandpaper's got aluminium or aluminium oxide in there. I don't like aluminium, it's very poisonous, it's what killed my dad, oddly. And I didn't fall on him, but my dad polished aluminium all his life, and he used to come on black with the dust. Not knowing how poisonous it was, and again, he died of cancer, my dad, age 59. Absolutely no age at all, and he was riddled with cancer, and it was horrible to watch him deteriorate and die. So I have a massive hatred for aluminium. I didn't know he had it in it till I bought it. So I'm always careful around it. But anyway, back to the polishing. I've always got a story, haven't I? I've always got something to tell. But anyway, back to the polishing. So, I can remove the main scratches with this stuff. And this kind of preps it nice and it gets rid of the nasty scratches. And I can move on to the finer stuff. So with that done, I'm just gonna get rid of that now. With that done, I'll take a brush. I'm gonna brush all the crap away. I see the dust flying into a cloud there. Shouldn't be breathing that in by rights, but. And there you go, that's that. So then we're gonna move on to the proper polishing. And I normally polish this end down to that end, but just for the camera, I'm gonna polish this end. So, polishing the frets. There's plenty there to do 24 frets at least. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna go across the top, and then we're gonna get into the sides. And you probably call them the corners. They're not corners as such. I'm on the inside at the moment, closest to the camera, and I'm gonna go across the top again, and back into the far side, and there you go. And that's that one done. I'll blow all the dust away there. You're not going to see much there, but once I've gone through the six different grits, we get a lovely sharp scratch free shine on these frets. So this is going to take me a while to do this. I've got 20 frets times six, that's 120. I've already done 20, that's 140. Then I'll finish off with the steel wash. It's 107, I've got 160 frets to polish in effect. It is going to take me a while. Uh, if I do the job properly, it's going to take me well into, well over an hour maybe even getting towards two hours if I do the job proper, which I will do the job proper. But let's say 90 minutes for sake of argument there. Um, so I'm gonna crack on with that, I'm gonna get all them done. Once that's done, I'll bring you in when I start finishing off with the steel wall and you see how great these frets have come up. So, bit of a boring time for me, I'm gonna bang some music on, I'm gonna crack on with this. I'll see you soon. With the polishing done, gone through with seven grits of paper, uh, we need to, Finish off now. The frets look great as they are, but we're going to finish the polishing off with the finest grade steel wool, which is super fine or extra fine. And what I like to do first is I like to go down the bevels and just clean them up both sides and that way. These will slightly scratch the frets again this way, but we're going to polish them out. We're going to finish the polishing this way. So now this is it. I always work right to left when I'm doing frets. What I'm going to do is going across the top, then I get into the corners again, pretty much like I did with sandpaper earlier, corner again, then back over the top. But you can't see this, so I'm going to come this end, and I'm going to do it at this end. So, steel wool on the guitar, steel wool over the top of the frets, into the far side, into the near side, back over the top. Now, I don't know what you can see there, I'm going to get a magnifying glass on there. And that looks beautiful. Scratch free, super shiner, look like brand new frets. I'll stick that on there anyway. I don't think you're gonna see it, but take my word for it. I will show you the frets once I've got them all done. These are all still dull because they've not been finished off with steel wool. This is super shiner and super smooth. So I'm gonna crack on, get all of these done. Once it's done, we'll come back, we'll get all the tape peeled off. I'll show you the frets, we'll all the fingerboard, we'll get the nut back on, and we'll get the guitar all set up. And now the best part, now the frets are all polished, is removing the tape. And I've peeled up the sides, and you now see why I put a strip along the whole length. It makes it easier to pull these up. 
and we can just take all of this off in virtually. We could do it all in one piece, we're not going to do that because I haven't peeled these edges up on the end yet, but how much easier that is. Same at this end. How easy is that? These frets look wonderful. They are fantastic. I'm going to just move the guitar around, try and keep it on camera. And there you go. There are the frets. They are wonderful. Scratch free, super shiny. Okay, we need to trick the fingerboard now. So, good thing is we've got tape over this side of the end of the guitar. We're going to stick a little bit of chamois leather over this end so we don't get any oil splashes anywhere. Going to be going with some lemon oil. What you know is lemon oil. It's not lemon oil, it's mineral oil with a bit of lemon essence in there to make it smell nice. It's a specially formulated mineral oil for darker woods, i.e. ebony, rosewood, palfero, anything fingerboardy. Uh, obviously not maple because they are lacquered. But any of you darker unlacquered woods. And there you go. And I'm going to rub that in and let that sit for a while. And what I'll do is that'll get into the wood. It'll get under any grime and dead skin or whatever. On there, we'll have to wipe all that off. I'm going to go and wash my hands immediately after rubbing this oil in because the one thing about that spray there, it doesn't, it's not a uh, wide spray like it used to be. So, so it doesn't do a mist spray, it just does a target spray. So there you go. That's the fingerboard all done. I'm going to chuck the glove. I'm using these bits of sandpaper away. I'm going to go in the bin. I'm going to go and wash my hands. I'm going to come back. 15 minutes, we'll give that a wipe over, get it all cleaned up. Once that's done, we can peel back all the tape, we'll get the nut back on, and we'll see about getting some strings on and getting the guitar set up. I'll tell you what I can do while I'm here. We can also get some oil on the bridge part. Just bring that up nice and dark there. Give that a little bit of treatment. That's beautiful. So that's all ready. Give it 15 minutes. And we'll come back in and we'll move on. On reflection, I sprayed the fingerboard and I was looking at it and I thought that grime in there is not just going to float away. So what I decided to do is come back and scrape off that grime. And I've done that on most of the fingerboards. Just got this bit to do here. And what we're doing is we're scraping all the crud away. And we're going to respray the oil. I've got these two to do here. So what we're going to do is we're going to get inside the frets. And I hope you can see what I'm doing there. We're going to scrape away all that crud. Last one here. Using a Stanley blade. And there you go. We're going to wipe that because that's all crudded up. And there you go. I'm not going to bother with these at the top because they're not so cruddy. We're going to blow all that crap away. And there you can see now the fingerboard has all been scraped. I'm going to shake that away and we're going to spray again and now the oil is going to get right into the wood then I'm going to walk away and leave this 10-15 minutes and this is going to come up beautiful because now we're into the raw wood there's probably never had any oil on it before because all that grime's been lifted out of the way And there you go. So I'm going to leave that 10 15 minutes and then we'll come back and we'll move on to the next part of the process. Put the blade away. I have a little holder for the blade there. This is one I use for scraping. That's out of the way, nice and safe. Save that for next time. So that's it. So I'll be back soon. So finally, we're getting right towards the end of this um, project. Before we tie everything up, um, we need one, to do one more thing. And that is to set the action of the strings above the first fret. And by doing that, we're just going to cut the slots to the correct depth um, once I've measured the gap. Now, the gap we're looking at is the gap between the top of the fret and the bottom of the string. And ideally, as a rule, for, and for me, we'll be looking at about 0.3 millimeters this side, and that's way above. And we're looking about 0.2 
on the treble side. So let me just get my here's my 0 0.2. It looks like let's just see where we are this side. And we are high everywhere. The problem with being high in all these places is when we borrow an F chord or an F sharp, maybe even a G, we're never going to be in correct pitch. We're going to be slightly sharp because we're pressing down more, which is stretching the strings further. So I'm going to take my Hosco nut slot files. Not had these long, I had them a couple of months. Uh, great files. I've got all of the ones I need out already. This is a 1356 set, so we're looking at a 13, 17, I believe a 20, is it a 24? No, 26, 35, 45, 56. So the closest we've got is we do have a 56, um, a 46, and a 36. That's for the three base side. Just get these lined up. This side we've got 13, 16, no sorry, 13, 17, 26. We have a 13, excuse me, 13, 16, 28, closest we've got. The 16 is slightly narrower, so we'll just flay that open a little. We'll do it slightly at an angle, just to widen that. I'm going to show you how we proceed with this task. So, get 0.3 mil. Feeler gauge. Guitar should be close to two, and I've had it sat overnight. That is an E. And we're very high there, so we're going to take the correct file, which is a point zero five six of an inch. These files cut a perfect U shape, uh, not a V shape like some of the cheaper ones. So what we're going to do is. We're going to remove a string from a nut, and we're going to try to, to loosen it even. Then we're just going to cut this groove and we're going to try and keep the same angle, slight angle it slightly toward the tuning peg and we're just going to carve in. We're not going to go gung-ho, it's a case of cut, uh, measure twice, cut once, we're going to measure many times. Because if we mess this up we're replacing the nut. And that takes time and it's expensive. Well it's costly financially and it's costly in time. And that one's done. It was really that simple. Take a cloth, we'll wipe the file, put it back in its little case, stick it out of the way, go to the next one, 46. We measure this one 0.3, we can go a little bit lower, so you have to do quite a bit of it by experience. Just bring it over, again same thing, nice and steady. Which I've got the right one, it feels a bit fat, yeah it is the right one. Seems to be sticking, so we're going to do a bit of work on this one. No, a little bit more than that. Like I say, keep measuring, take your time, do not go too deep because you will re be replacing the knot. And like I say, it takes time and it's going to cost you in the long run. You don't want to be replacing knots when you can just take your time and do it right. on this now. So this one I'll be looking about 0.25 on these middle two so I'm going to change the feeler gauge because we're going to get gradually lower as we get to the treble strings. The reason we do that is your fatter strings vibrate a lot more than your unwound strings at this side. So let's have a look for 0.25. These are general sizes, they're pretty much standard, the sizes I use. If you Got a different view or a different opinion that's absolutely fine you don't have to go by my measurements you can go by your own so from my experience 0.3 this side 0.2 that side works pretty well across the board 
I've not had any complaints yet, so I uh, must be doing something right. Don't need to go too much deeper on this one, it's pretty close to where it needs to be. It will make all the difference though. Perfect. We're hitting these right at the spot we need to be every time, which is good. Now regarding the rest of the guitar, the action, I can't do a lot about the action because we're pretty much as low as we can go anyway. Uh, we do have an action of 2.5mm at the 12th fret on the bass side and 1.6mm on the treble side. I would have liked to have been a little bit lower on the bass side, but the thing is, if I remove any more from a saddle, we're going to have such a bad break angle on the string going under the pin that it's not going to work and it's going to create buzz. So I've decided I'm going to leave it there. Now, two and a half millimeters on the 12th fret on the bass side anyway is pretty much standard. So I'm quite happy to leave up there. I have set the neck a little bit straighter than I normally would do. There's absolutely no relief in this neck, uh, but I'm quite happy with that. I've played the guitar up and down the board and it plays really beautifully. It's a nice guitar. <laughs> A little bit lower on this one. Don't need to go mental, so we're going to take his time. Like I said, this is a bit narrow, so we're going to flare it open just slightly angle. And that should be just about where we need to be. Slightly flare that a little bit wider though, like I said. Not cutting any depth, just cutting a little bit of width. And I think that should take us where we need to be. Now we can go a little bit deeper. are the unwound strings we need to go about 0 0.2 on these I've seen it somewhere there you go that's really really high that one Check again before I cut. Again, this being a 16 into flare, this just a little bit more. I may have said that was a 17, that's actually a 26 there or 25. So, this being a 16, we need to go to 17, we're going to have to flare this a little bit wider. So, we're going to angle angle let's have a look see where we are there I have cut too deep before and I've replaced nuts before and it really is a bind 
some necessary expense so it really does pay to take your time and keep checking I don't want to go much deeper than that though when you get to these smaller measurements you just want to be really careful and I'm thinking that that's going to be just about right there I'm going to measure that again. Don't need a lot of adjustments on that one. It's pretty much where it needs to be. Measure again. We are talking an nth. 0 0.013 of an inch. And that's it, we have the nut cut. So all I need to do now is stretch the strings in, uh, get it in tune, and we can finalise this video, and the client can come and collect his guitar. For reference, we are finished, and what a beautiful guitar. And I've got to look in the look at the label and remind myself what it is. It's a Breedlove Atlas series, a retro OM, forward slash SME. It's an electroacoustic, uh, buh, 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 buh. And there you go, what a beautiful thing. So why did it come in? Well it came in just needed a, a good clean and a setup. Fingerboard was a little bit grubby. Um, the action and everything was okay, but on inspecting it we did find out that the frets were all over the place. Now I do believe 17 high spots or something there about over 12 frets uh, were causing us a problem. So we have uh, leveled the frets reprofile the frets and polish them all up and the frets now trust me are bang on level the guitar looks fantastic it plays fantastic um, some of the things we've done we've cut the slots in the nut to bring the action down at the headstock end uh, we haven't altered the bridge or the saddle we can't do anything at that end anyway because of the brake angle on the strings is just how it needs to be we do however have an action of, I did say 2.5mm earlier, it's actually 2.25mm above the 12th fret on the bass and 1.5mm on the treble side. The guitar plays fantastic. Um, the fingerboard also, it was a bit grimy, a bit dirty. I did, pull, I did uh, treat it with some um, lemon oil or some, some mineral oil, that wasn't enough. I eventually had to go back and scrape the fingerboard, get all the crap off it and re-oil it, which I did. I actually did the whole lot in the end. I did leave these at first, but off camera I went back and redid them. So we've treated the whole fingerboard, so that is now all perfect. 
what a great guitar I've been playing I've had it plugged in also when I had it plugged in these uh, controls were a little bit scratchy so we've gone in with a little bit of switch cleaner service old super 10 my standard switch cleaner uh, the electrics are now playing fine with no scratching pots or anything and it's a beautiful beautiful guitar now I do know there was more cost in this than the um, owner actually anticipated but he didn't know he needed a fret level thing is when all said and done I knocked him a bit of money off uh, when all said and done now he's got the fret level done this guitar will stand him in good stead for many many years to come the neck is dead straight the frets are level the recrowned uh, the nut is cut, the action is perfect and this guitar will stand in stead for, good stead for many years. A great looking thing, very very well built even though it's one of the Asian import ones. Uh, a very very nice guitar. So that is this one done, it remains, remains one thing for me to do. That is to remind you of my website facebook.com forward slash ng17 that's facebook.com forward slash n-g-o-n-e-s-e-v-e-n you can also go to fretfriend.co.uk I am Victor, I am your fret friend and until the next project as always God bless you especially be good to each other and I'll see you in the next one